I was just playing on one of my older playthroughs to test something out that won't work well on the beach farm and I just casually decided to enter the skull cavern. It is important to note that on this playthrough I do not have the infinity blade or very good ring combinations but I was under the impression that it was just a normal everyday skull cavern run for some casual iridium farming. But boy was I wrong. Apparently, just before I stopped playing on this playthrough, I accepted a Mr. Key special order request that buffs up all the enemies in the skull cavern and this is actually the first time I have ever seen this quest in action. Let me tell you one thing, I was not prepared for these extra long, extra tanky royal serpents. They are basically the same as the regular green serpents, they are just extra extra strong. After three of them swarmed me on my first attempt, I actually got overwhelmed and died. <laughs> I haven't died in the skull cavern for such a long long time on my other playthroughs since I used vampire rings and the vampirism and chance. I wish I was recording this with my microphone on but I was just so surprised at how much damage they were actually doing. After waking up in the clinic for some strange reason, I didn't lose any gold or items. I wonder if this is an effect of the quest? Maybe the developer predicted that many people would be defeated in the mines and he removed the penalty of dying. However, I was just about ready to quit and restart the game. But since I was pretty early on into the day, I decided no, I'm gonna go back into the skull cavern. I thought to myself, I was just overwhelmed. Maybe they just aren't that tough to defeat. So I ate some cheese and headed straight back to the skull cavern. It was going slightly better this time. I was mining, defeating enemies, and slowly progressing into the mines until floor 7. And that's where three royal serpents ganged up on me. Something very interesting about these enemies, if you hit them with your sword, they will bounce back and then kind of slingshot back at you. So the closer their tail is to you, the faster their heads get flung back at you. Unfortunately, I died again. <laughs> twice in one day and the second death was only two hours after my first death. I can't really explain it but I decided to go back into the skull cavern again. <laughs> if only two deaths was enough, I was chasing another death. I don't know what to say, I just wanted that iridium ore but this time I was going to play it extremely safe. So if I ever felt overwhelmed by enemies or I was just getting low on health, I would just immediately leave the skull cavern and have to start all over again. I will admit that doing this will not help you get very deep into the mine but without the proper gear defeating these enemies was just not happening. I'm not sure how this is, but I think the longer each royal serpent is, the more health they have. Because my galaxy sword does about 80 damage per hit, but sometimes it feels like I have to hit these guys 10 times before they go down. I'm wearing the slime charmer ring, so at least the slimes aren't a problem at all. They look pretty cool with their sunglasses though. I think if I had to worry about slimes, and royal serpents, I probably would not have come back into the skull cavern after being defeated two times. There are also a couple of other enemies that you will need to watch out for. Those flying heads that shoot fireballs at you that you would usually see in only the regular mines. Well, they are in the skull cavern now too. And when you hit them, they do a very weird erratic movement that sometimes results in you taking unnecessary, unavoidable damage. At least they don't do that much damage and their max health isn't that much. Next up is the buffed up purple mummies. They're pretty much the same as the regular mummies, they just hit harder and are tankier. I would just say I wish I brought my slingshot into the skull cavern dive to make it easier to finish them off. But if you ever find yourself not holding your sword out, then you are probably going to die unless you have lightning reflexes. So to conclude the story, I didn't die a third time. I managed to survive until 2am by playing very safe. Unfortunately, I don't think I will be able to complete this quest within the time frame, at least not on this playthrough. I believe the Infinity Blade is most definitely required to complete this quest and the Vampiric Enchant will just make your life that much easier. 
Also, I would highly recommend bringing a couple of staircases. So if you are in a sticky situation, you can immediately drop a staircase and get to the next floor. And if you have a couple of crystallariums, you can easily make many staircases as you want by replicating jades and trading them in in the desert trader on Sundays. Before I try this quest out again, have you completed this quest yet? And if so, do you have any tips or tricks to complete this? Thank you so much for watching this video. This was just a little fun video as I decided to make a video based on how much fun I had even though I died a bunch of times. If you like this video and don't want to miss the next one, please consider subscribing. But for now, until next time.